And so goes Ron, leaving us with Nikki and Don. Ron DeSantis dropped out of the race just two days before the New Hampshire primary, which is too bad because Donald Trump had 27 new insults he was hoping to try. <laughs> But that's after Ron was polling in single digits in New Hampshire and lost in Iowa to Trump by 30 points. True, he was about as popular in Iowa as a cold sore at a kissing booth. <laughs> Here he is sounding pretty relieved it's over with. If there was anything I could do to produce a favorable outcome, more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. But I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. Oh, disgusting, right? He's actually honoring a pledge, and he calls himself a politician. <laughs> so Trump picks up yet another endorsement. But I wonder if he took the time to congratulate Ron. I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis and, of course, a really terrific person who had gotten to know his wife, Casey, for having run a great campaign for president. He did. He ran a, a really good campaign. Oh, that is so Donald. <laughs> But did he, though? Between his campaign and the super PAC supporting it, DeSantis spent tens of millions and still got trounced. I haven't seen such a waste of money since Joy Behar had her lips done. <laughs> <laughs> but was it really a waste? To me, it was worth it. Because for the longest time, the argument was to challenge Trump with the best alternative, almost as a stress test, but also to give those who wanted a viable replacement to Trump to have one. And they got it. They got a few, actually. But it still wasn't nearly enough. Trump won big. And that's despite him being attacked on all fronts, legally and in the media. So there should be no more, why are we settling with Trump if you actually had the option and you saw it flounder? It's like saying to America, get off your gas guzzler and embrace this new electric revolution. Well, the option was there and they went with the gas guzzler. Maybe in the future we will consider it, but not right now. So to continue with the car metaphor, Ron was a reliable sedan, but Republicans want a Humvee with monster tires and a built-in propane grill that will drive over stalled Priuses, shooting lasers, and playing God Bless America with a bald eagle perched on the hood. <laughs> Vivek, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, it, it's a good point. You needed to have... Yeah. You needed to have, I mean, you can't, you, you guys are great candidates. I mean, you and, and DeSantis, you, you, were the, you were the fresh voice, the smartest guy in the room. DeSantis was the best governor. You know, you can't just say, oh, we're stuck with Trump. DeSantis was an excellent governor. I'm not going to knock him. I know how hard of a decision that is to make. It was, for me, not a decision that I planned to make until we took about 20 minutes that night. And I decided on the spot that night after Iowa, you, you, you see the way this is going. Let's actually do the right thing for the country. And I'm glad Ron made the right decision as well. I think he has an outstanding future, whatever it is. He's going to have an impact on the country. Got to know him a certain amount through the process, and I'm confident he cares about this country, and he's going to have an impact on our politics going forward. You guys hang out a lot? We didn't hang out much. Uh, Ron, Ron wasn't a, you know, I... I, I wasn't a, you guys, you, know, guys I, I, you know, I, I think... But go we, bar hopping? We, we didn't, you know, I, I was down. <laughs> but, uh, but I will say that he could be a good attorney general or something like that, to tell you the truth about Ron. But I will say this, is there was one part of that that I think we should probably double-click on is I think the super PACs have been all bad for American politics. Democrats, Republicans, it doesn't matter. The amount of money that you said was wasted, I think a lot of that money was wasted because I think the voters could have equally had the choice without putting up those plastic 30-second TV ads on networks across the board in Iowa and New Hampshire. It doesn't matter. It's all fake plastic. It, in the short run, moves some numbers. I didn't play that game. I put $30 million of my own hard-earned money into the campaign. Mm -hmm. I wish it didn't have to work that way either, but it's better than the super PACs. Dude, you could have given that to me. <laughs> yeah. I would have put, put, put you on the show every night. <laughs> Well, you know, we, once in a while is good. Yes. I think, I think it's better for everybody. Yes. But I do think that this is, a, this is an issue the Republicans can own coming out of this is we should be the party that says we want to get the influence of mega money out of politics. Mm -hmm. We're the party of we the people. And I do think that could be a pivot for our party going forward. Pat. Pat, didn't you like how he said I want to double click on something? Yeah. That's why he's like Vivek. 
Just, That's why I got like 8%. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna double the, Kat, you called me this morning in tears over this. How are you taking First of all, this? I would never call you if I was in tears. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the last person I want to talk to if I was upset. Because I would Go be ahead. laughing. Yeah. Yeah. No, how do you take this? Uh, well, look, a, a lot of people are saying what went wrong here, right? He was such a good governor who handled COVID so well. How did this go so badly? And I think part of it was that he pretty much like never brought that up. Yeah, that's <laughs> All true. the COVID stuff and, you know, the freedom that Florida had. He was, you know, instead of talking about that, he was like, I'm going to run against drag queens. <laughs> he got so into the drag queens are bad and the Disney is bad that honestly, I'm all for the parents' rights stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. But he went so far that some of it was actually anti-parents' rights. Like some of the laws were like, you can't bring your child into what is an adult performance that's determined by the government. I just don't want the government to tell me where I could bring my kids if I had them. Stay tuned, maybe someday. <laughs> but um, <laughs> one guy's like, do it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think he, he wasn't even really that focused on the right things. So, mm -hmm. but also I think it was going to be Trump no matter what. What do you no say, Adam? That. You are an astute <laughs> political analyst. Astute. Uh, I don't know. I think the, his polls were rough. I've seen better looking polls in a Montana strip club. Um, <laughs> and that's in the uh, day shift. Um, <laughs> But I, it's crazy because people are going to vote for Nikki Haley, some people, just because she's a woman. Because yeah. we had our first black president, and we had our first orange president, and, <laughs> you know, now we have our first dead president. Um, <laughs> but... I, you know, I think anyone's better than now. I live in California, and, like, gas is so expensive, people are doing walk-by shootings, you know? And, um, <laughs> like, there's more needles on the ground than a Nancy Pelosi's forehead. Um, <laughs> It's just, I don't know why you dropped out. You were doing good. Yeah, uh, thank you, man. I appreciate you, it. You should have stuck in there, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. What about you, Emily? You get the last word. It just always strikes me as so, it's really impressive to me when candidates, you know, suspend their campaign and then all of a sudden everyone else is like, I'm so honored to have your endorsement. Like, everything is fine. I guess it's the Sicilian in me, but if someone even looks at me wrong, I'm like, I wish you nothing but death forever. <laughs> so the, the, like, tur I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are you have such big hearts. Um, I, I think what's really interesting actually is what might, well, what probably will happen in New Hampshire. So we know that Trump was ahead of Nikki by 17 points even before DeSantis dropped out, right? So the question remains right. how many independents and Democrats will Haley get? But to me, the bigger question is the fact that Biden's not actually on the ticket. Yeah. And we have someone named Dean Phillips running who's running hilarious ads of Sasquatch looking for the president. Where is he? Because he's nowhere. And I think it's, it's really going to be interesting how well he does because that might be what induces other sort of big name Democrats to step in and be like, Biden, get out of the way. Okay, so do you notice that Dean Phillips and DeSantis are never in the same room <laughs> together? <laughs> oh my gosh. It, it's it's bizarre. It's right? bizarre. And they are dead ringers. Put that in post. <laughs> pictures together. No, it's serious. I'm serious. They look exactly... Oh, I noticed that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's creepy. Mm. It's like Sasquatch and Joy Behar. Yes, exactly. <laughs> How dare you impugn Sasquatch? <laughs> All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.